Okay, we're about to start a pretty important section, uh, Section 8.4, and I want you to, with this section, learn three important log properties. And I need for you to go ahead and get these in your notes, and we're just going to go ahead and start using these. I think that's the best way to learn them instead of just trying to you know, talk through what you see here. Uh, my next screen is actually going to put into practice what you're going to have to do with tonight's assignment. So we have the product property, by the way, uh, all the all you see here are variables. Uh, that's a B, like log base B of M times N. It's not a six. I know my B's look like sixes, but there are no numbers. This is just using variables to represent these three properties product property, the quotient property, and the power property, and we're going to need to get really good at these in order to do what's going to be asked of us in the next two sections. So probably tomorrow uh, we'll spend some time uh, practicing this some more. We're actually going to take a couple of days um, because it's, it's that important. All right, so now that you have these properties in your notes, let's take a look at how we use these. And what I'm going to do here is show you some examples that follow your homework problems 11 through 18. So the directions, I just took them just like your book has them. They're going to ask you to take expressions that contain multiple logs, two or three, and we're going to use those properties, the ones that apply, to condense multiple logs into a single log. Okay, so let me start us off with number one. First of all, I noticed that these two log expressions have the same base. Uh, that's right off the bat. You cannot use the properties that you just wrote down unless you're dealing with log expressions that have the same base. All right, that has to be true. And you won't have to worry about that. The book's not going to trick you tonight. I just want you to be aware that these properties apply to same base logarithms. Okay, well, according to, I'm going to flip back real fast and then I'll come back to this slide. According to the product property, two different logs, same base, that are being added together can be joined together as a single logarithm using multiplication. Basically what it says. So applying that property to number one, my answer very simply will be log base five of 12, two times six. Okay, number two. I'm going to go back to my previous slide and then I'll come back. The quotient property says when two same base logarithms are being subtracted, then I can put them together as a single log with that base using division. So applying the quotient property on number two, my answer is going to be log base three of five, 20 divided by four. Okay, maybe I can get a volunteer on number three. Just raise your hand if you want it. Okay, Nick? Uh, it would be log six. Log six. And it's understood here that the base is ten. ten. Right. So he's exactly right. My answer for number three will just be log six. Okay, volunteer for number four, JT? Uh, it would be log base four. Excellent. Now here is a case, unlike these, where we can actually go ahead and go one step more and evaluate this based on yesterday's lesson. This says 4 raised to some power is equal to 4. What is the power? Yeah, so in cases like that, where it's easy, obviously this says 5 raised to some power equals 12. Well, right now, you're not able to do that without a calculator. Tomorrow or Monday, I'll show you how you can do this with a calculator. I'm going to show you a little formula. 
But for tonight, if you do run into cases like this where uh, the answer is pretty easy to evaluate, then I want you to go ahead and do that. All right, let's take a look at number five. It's a little different. What makes number five different from problems one through four? Yeah, you notice how this log has 6 multiplied times it? Well, here's the deal. If you're going to combine logarithms into a single log, you've got to clear any number in front of any log that appears. Like this 6 has to be moved. I have to create situations like these where I have no numbers being multiplied in front of the log before I can combine them. Well, fortunately, the power property addresses this problem because it says if I do have a number being multiplied times a log, I can just take that number and make it become the exponent. So in other words, we're going to take the number which right now in our problem is 6 and we're going to move it so that it becomes the exponent for this number in m's place, which is x. So before I do any combining of logarithms, I'm going to apply the power property, which will look like this. Now, somebody help me out with the product property. Two logs being added can be put together as a single log. How? Multiplication. So if you multiply these together, x to the 6th times y, that's what you get, x to the 6th y. Okay, volunteer on number 6. How about Reagan McCain? Um, is that 12? Uh -huh. Log 12 minus log 3. Log 4. Very good. Two different logs being subtracted, as long as they have the same base, put them together using division. Okay, number 7, you can see my hint here. Once again, I can't combine these logs into a single unless I've cleared any numbers in front of the log. So I'm going to use the power property. And I can even go one step further before I start combining these logarithms. What is 2 to the third? Mm -hmm. So instead of writing it as 2 to the third power, hopefully it sounds like you guys understand, I could just make that log base 11 of 8. Okay, so James, uh, help me put these together as a single log base 11. Go back over here. Two logs that are being added can be put together as a single log using multiplication. 56. There you go. All right. Uh, volunteer for number eight. We got two properties in play here. Anybody want this one? <clears throat> Maybe Olivia can help us with this one. You just take them up, like two, at least first two. What if you just did those two? Okay, and we'll just bring down this other one. While you're still getting used to it, you can just do them <clears throat> going left to right. Just take them as you come to them. Now I'll put these two together. There you go. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chloe, what has to happen on number nine first <clears throat> before I can combine logs? Um, we're actually going to move the two. It's going to become an exponent for four. 
So before I can think about, I've got to clear any numbers in front of log, numbers that are being multiplied. I'm going to move them so that they become exponents. And I'm going to go to a new screen. I know I'm a little bit low on the board. I got log 2, and then that should be log, <coughs> excuse me, 16, and then plus log 3. Is that right? Okay, now, Chloe, let's just go left to right, and we'll just do them up one pair at a time. How would you put these first two together? Two over 16, very good. And we can go ahead and reduce that and we'll say one eighth. Awesome. And now we'll put that together with log three. What would that look like? Good. Just multiply them together and we're done. Okay, any questions so far? <clears throat> we have uh, looked at taking multiple logs and expressing them as a single log using our properties. Well, it's typical in math class, we just get comfortable going one direction and now we have to go the other direction. So we're gonna be using these properties backwards and forwards. Now we're taking a single log expression and we're gonna expand it into multiple logs using those same properties. So I wonder if somebody would like to take number one. We've got division. So maybe Hannah, would you like to do that? Nice. We associate division, and when we expand, we use subtraction, quotient property. Just to give you another look at it, that's what the quotient property says. We took this, and we wrote it as subtraction. All right, uh, number two, I'm just going to walk through this one because it's really pretty easy. There's really nothing to expand. Uh, the only thing we have to remember when we expand, now exponents have to be treated as factors. It's, it's kind of like the opposite way we were thinking before. We're not going to have any exponents in our expansion. So the only move that needs to be done in number two is to bring that four down and treat it as a factor. And number two is done. So for expanding, just keep in mind, exponents become factors. Okay, um, Eli, would you like to take number three? Yeah. Log base A minus. Log base no, seven of T. 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 Okay, minus. Minus log base seven. Awesome. Okay, number four. Yeah. Uh, it would be log four times log times. Oh, plus plus log three log. P. Okay, he caught it. Three log p. So I put this multiplication sign here for you on purpose. The book would not do this, but. You can kind of think that at the point of multiplication, that's kind of like our dividing point. That's where we're going to separate this. Since we're multiplying two numbers together, we're going to use two different logarithms in our expansion. And he did a great job with that. Okay, any questions so far? All right, I got a few more. Um, most people have trouble. They do more than is necessary on problems like number five. This matches up very closely with your number 25. It's not exact, but it's very similar. Well, let me just give you a hint. This is where multiplication occurs. And so basically it's going to amount to breaking this up into two different log base three terms. 
using what operation? Sorry? Addition. Okay. So uh, anybody want it? Olivia? Wow, that's impressive. Good job. Outstanding. You guys are catching on quickly. Uh, I'm going to hurry on to number six because it's very important that when you see radicals, you change these, and we know how to do this now because of chapter seven, you need to change radical into rational exponent form. What do I mean by that? Well, see if this makes sense to you. I'm going to take this radical and I'm going to rewrite it as 4 to the 1 half x to the 1 half over y to the 1 half. Everything being raised, everything's under the radical, so everything needs to be raised to the 1 half power. Now I'm going to expand unless somebody wants it. You might want this one. Here's what the expansion looks like. We've got multiplication here. We've got division here. So I'm going to separate the multiplication using what? Addition. Division using? Okay, so we'll see if this makes sense. 1 half log 4 plus 1 half log x minus 1 half log y. Make sense? So we had all, th the reason I like this one is all three properties were involved. Okay, for number seven, which is closely matched up with your homework problem number 28, so when you get to number 28, hopefully you'll be able to go back and look at how we did this example. Uh, remember, you always want to change radical into rational exponent form. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to show this as six times, and then I'll just use parentheses. Um, I'm going to have two raised to the one half. Okay, it's the square root of two. And then x raised to the three halves. Okay, so we have multiplication. All right, and let's go ahead and, uh, and expand this. So we have log base 6 of 6 plus 1 half log base 6 of 2 plus 1 half, or 3 halves, sorry, exponent 3 halves log base 6 of x. So it's very important. Okay, so I hope that helps you uh, with number 7. And again, uh, look, check that out as you, uh, or refer back to this as you do number 28. The only thing I'm going to do, and I wouldn't necessarily count this wrong tomorrow, but when you do recognize opportunities to simplify or evaluate logarithms like we have here, I hope you recognize that log base 6 of 6 is actually 1. So um, what I'm writing here is really a better way of showing that answer. But for now, since this is still kind of new, and by the way, these are 6s, they're not Bs. Um, I would not count it wrong if you left it here, but I hope you see how that this basically says 6 to what power equals 6 in the power or the log, evaluating the log, uh, the answer would be 1. Okay? All right, got one more, and I uh, thought I would help you out uh, with number 29. This isn't number 29, but it's uh, very close, very similar. And uh, So here's my note again. Make sure you always change radical form to rational exponent form. So that's just another way of saying 5 to the 1 half power. And now I'm going to apply really all three properties. I've got the product, power, and quotient property all 
being used here. So to expand this, I'm going to do log x. And because I've got multiplication, I'm going to use addition. Remember that exponents come down and serve as factors, 1 half log 5. Okay, where I have division, I'm going to use subtraction. Don't forget the exponent. It's like saying 2 log y. Okay, so that is the answer for number 8, expanding into three different log terms. Okay, well, when you get down to the last part, 33 through 41, it's really a continuation. You're still using those properties, but in these, every one of these problems, you will be able to evaluate and come up with a single number answer. Okay, so you are going to use your properties. I want you to show the properties because that's going to help you learn them. But after combining into a single logarithm, you should be able to evaluate into just one number. All right, so for example, I'm going to use the quotient property here, and I'll actually show it. Uh, log base 2 of 6 divided by 3, of course, which is the same thing as saying log base 2 of 2. All right, well, evaluating this, it says 2 raised to some power equals 2. Well, the power that is needed for a base of 2 to equal 2, of course, is the number 1. So that's the evaluate. I use the properties to get to here. Actually, just use one property and then evaluate from there. All right, so here's number 2. I need to put these together as a single log expression. So I'm going to move, move the 4. So this is going to be log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 2 to the 4th power, which is 16. All right, so now, again, I'm using the properties, so I want you to show them. Two different logs with the same base being added can be put together as a single log using multiplication. So 4 times 16 is 64, log base 2 of 64. Now, to evaluate this, you think of it as 2 raised to some power is equal to 64. And evaluate means, what is the power? Well, the power needed for 2, for 2 to make it equal to 64 is 6. 2 to the 6th power is 64. All right. Uh, I think I've got one more, two more. Okay, so let's uh, use our properties, move the two. We're, our goal is to put these together as a single logarithm. And I'll show some work here so you can follow along. And just keep in mind I can't combine into a single logarithm until I've cleared the space in front of log. All right, and this is another way of saying log base 8, 16. And 8 to the 1 -third power, that's another way of saying the cube root of 8, okay? And the cube root of 8 is 2. All right, using my quotient property, two separate logs with the same base being subtracted could be put together as a single log using division. So that's just log base 8 of 8. And evaluating that log, 8 to what power equals 8, that's 1. Okay, I think this is my last example, so clear, 1 half. Clear the 2. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and simplify. 1 to the 1 half, that's another way of saying the square root of 1, which is obviously just one. And uh, this is another way of saying log base four of 16. Okay, use your property. Two logs being subtracted can be put together as a single log using division. Log base four of 1 16th. 
So what this says in when we evaluate it, it means a base of 4 raised to some power equals 1 16. So when you evaluate a log, again, you're finding the necessary exponent. And the, the exponent here would be negative 2. And that would be your final answer. All right, so uh, I think I've covered all the problems on this assignment. So uh, we're going to really practice these properties, and you need to contact me if you have any questions, and uh, I'll be glad to help you.